In this video, we'll be analyzing donor information using AWS QuickSight. So in this video, we'll be going over what is AWS QuickSight. We'll be going over the requirements. We'll set up a QuickSight subscription. We'll use test data from S3 Bucket. We'll create a visualization in QuickSight. We'll share that data with other users. And then finally, we'll cancel our QuickSight subscription. So what is QuickSight? QuickSight is a business intelligence engine that allows you to share AWS data. It could be external data from spreadsheets to databases to third-party data and have it produce a dashboard that can be easily interpreted and shared. So the requirements for this demonstration are going to be an AWS account. Uh, if you don't already have an AWS account, I'll have a link down below so you can sign up for one. A quick site subscription, and we'll go through that during the video. And we'll be using a test file, a CSV file for uh, donor information. I'll have a link for that down below as well. Okay, so I've logged into the console. I'm in the Ohio region. In addition to the AWS subscription, you have to sign up for a QuickSight subscription as well. So let's go into the search bar here and see if we can find it. So let's go ahead and sign up for QuickSight. All right, so we're going to use the default subscription, the Enterprise Edition, which you can also choose the Enterprise Plus Q Edition. We're going to use the, uh, the, the trial for 30 days, um, so we're not going to get charged for this. So let's go ahead and scroll down here and continue. All right, to create the QuickSight account, um, we're, the authentication we're going to be using is the IAM Federated Identities and the QuickSight Manage Users, and we'll find out why later we chose this as far as uh, sharing goes. And then uh, the region I've, I've chosen, uh, the Ohio region, and then you need to type in an account name and then your email address. And then I'm going with the default uh, use QuickSight manage role. And then for access, you can actually use all of these services to, to bring in data. For this demonstration, we're just going to use an S3 bucket. And then I'm going to use this QuickSight demo bucket here. And then we'll hit uh, finish here. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while this is creating the account. All right, uh, the account's been created. Now we can go to Amazon QuickSight. Okay, now that we have the QuickSight subscription set up, we need to go back to the AWS console, and we need to upload the demo file that we're going to use, which is a CSV file. So let's go back to the console here. I'm already in S3 here. I've already created a bucket right here. And I've also uploaded the DSV uh, file. Like I said earlier, this uh, this demo file is in a link down below, so you can use that as a test file as well. You'll see another file in here, this JSON file. Now this is required to tell QuickSight where the data is. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up, and then go to open. And we'll just see. It's, this is basically all I did is. Print this URI link to the CSV file. There's also a, a link down below on AWS's website on how to create their JSON file. Okay, so let's go back to the QuickSight console. Let's, let's go back to the account we had. Okay, now that we're back in the QuickSight console, first thing we do is create a data set. So let's click on data sets here. And we need to choose new data set. You can choose many of these services here, but for our test demo, we're going to use the S3 bucket. Okay, for the data source name, we can call this anything we want to. So I'm going to put in um, fundraising. And then for the manifest file, is the JSON file that we talked about earlier. I'm going to go back and get the URI for that file. So let's go back to here. And then we're going to copy this. And then let's go back to the 
put a set here and then paste this in. Uh, also, fingers and spokes, let's hit connect. All right, so now that I um, brought in the, the file, now we can do visualize here. And then hit create. You notice it brought in some column headings over here on the left. So we're going to go ahead and, and choose amount in associated event. You notice it's spinning right here. It's producing the data. I'll pause the video while it's doing that. Okay, our graph phone got generated. I had an issue with the JSON file, but um, we got it to work. So. Anyway, here's our first graph. Now we can create another graph. Actually, before we do that, if you look down the visual types down here, we can actually change this. This is the default. Uh, we could change it to this donut chart, or we could change it to pie chart. So this is pie chart for now. But to uh, to create another chart, I'm just going to go to right over here, go down to edit mode, and then I'm going to go ahead and just um, select these two fields again. All right, so let's go ahead and change the heading here. So let's click on Edit. And we're going to change the title. And let's change it to Oops. So we have that change now. So let's find this one over here. Let's change, uh, let's filter this. So instead of just bringing in all the data, we're going to filter this. Filter by date. And for the date and time range, a little bit there in between. So let's have a start date of February 1st, 2001. Entering in, and then end date is going to be middle of Friday. And then we'll change the title. I'll call it home. And so we got that done. And you just keep on, you can add as many graphs as you want to on here. Um, let's go to themes and change this up a little bit. Oh, it's midnight themes, so let's change that. That's pretty cool. And if we go back to translation here, let's change this one to something different as well. Let's change it to the Stop. No, it's not, it's not good. Let's change it to something else. Um, we'll do vertical bars. I think the real value in QuickSight is this option here, Quick uh, Insights here. You'll notice it brought up what it thought was interesting on each one of these graphs here. So it's got the top three associated events for our first sheet right here, first um, the pie chart here, and then down below here, it's got uh, some information for the other, the other chart we created over here as well. Okay, so before we share this with anybody, we need to manage users. So let me go back, I'll show you where I'm at now. So we were in the dashboard here, and then in the top right up here, you go to manage. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to invite a user. I'm going to add that user. There we go. Okay. And this is not an IAM user. 
um, and I'm just going to give them the reader role, but you can make them admin or an author. So let's go ahead and hit invite here. All right, now we can go to the dashboard and we can share this dashboard with that user. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can go back up into share here. We can share dashboard. Type in the user we just created. There we go. Go ahead and tap in. There we go. Okay. So we added him as a viewer. Now that person's going to get an email and it gives them direct access to the dashboard. So let's go there. All right, so I got the invite from QuickSight. This is a copy of what the email message looks like right here. Um, so you have to accept the invitation and then uh, set up your account. Once you set up the account, then you can uh, you'll get a you'll actually get a second email on uh, the link to actually get to the um, the dashboard. All right, so that's how you share the dashboards. So anyway, that is uh, that's QuickSight. Um, so before we finish, let's go ahead and make sure that we cancel the subscription because after 30 days, we don't get to charge for it. So let's go ahead and get out of here. Um, actually, we're going to go to Manage QuickSight, go to Account Settings, and say you need to switch to USC. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're back in US East 1, and then we'll go to um, Manage QuickSight again, and let's go to Account Settings, and this is where we terminate the account. So um, this does not terminate your AWS account, just QuickSight. So let's go to Manage. And turn off the termination injection. Phone here. And then get into the account. And you'll notice that it comes up with a bunch of things it was not able to remove. So I don't know if this is a bug, but the policies that you see here are automatically created and included by AWS Manager, so you can't remove those. You can remove the roles though. So let's go ahead and go to the quick site for the AWS console, and you can pretty much delete any roles associated with quick site. And we'll go to roles. Let's just type in quick sight. And we can delete these two roles. Let's go ahead and do that now. That one's done. Delete this one. All right. That's it. We deleted the accounts. We deleted our subscriptions. So we should be good to go here. Before we get to the end of this video, I wanted to talk about a new initiative that AWS has. It's called the Tech Action. And on the page I have displayed here, you can see there's a application grant for up to $5,000 to get your fundraising and donor solution scaled up. I'll have the same link below in the notes for anybody who's interested. All right, so in this video, we went over how to create a QuickSight subscription. We discussed how to bring in that data from an S3 bucket. We visualized the data in a dashboard. We shared that data with external users. And then we uh, we canceled the subscription. So I hope this was uh, helpful for you. If it was, if you would give me a thumbs up. And if you have any comments down below, please go ahead and put those in. Also, all the resources I used to make this video are down below, including the link to the uh, donor data, the CSV file. If you have any questions, just post them down below, and I'll do my best to answer those.